In this video, we're gonna be going through how to use Instagram to promote your business. That's pretty much it, so let's go. So straight away, step one, you're gonna wanna develop your page. And there's a few different things that you can do here. I've essentially just set up a page here a couple of days ago called Fern City, which reflects a Shopify store that I've started as well, Fern City. We also have a Facebook page, but that's another video. So I'll just go through here on what I've done. You need to treat your Instagram page as a landing page. You can do all of this promotion, all of this marketing, and people are essentially gonna be drawn to your page through this effective marketing campaign that I'll explain in this video. But when they get to that page, it needs to be solid gold. It needs to be idiot proof. Then they can follow through the extended funnel, which is essentially what your page is, to your Shopify store making the purchases, whatever you have. So I'm just gonna start at the top of this page and explain what I've done. The logo, basically just went on Canva and designed that. The name is congruent with the brand that is the same as my Shopify store, but it's also congruent with the niche itself. I'm selling eco-friendly products. So I'm calling it Fern City because ferns are a type of plant and I wanna you know, incorporate people who live in urban areas. And I think that city is kind of like a community name for a brand, so go figure. Then we've got the bio, an eco-friendly shopping store. We donate 10% of profits to the world's most effective charities. Founder at Conica Lewis. I'm trying to keep it really concise here. What are we? An eco-friendly shopping store. Who built it? Me. I like being transparent and people just have another point of reference for what this business is because people really get behind people and it's harder to get behind a brand than it is to get behind a person. And I also include that we donate to givewell.org, which essentially categorizes the top most effective charities in the world. You wanna have the category as shopping and retail. This is just gonna help with the Instagram and Facebook ads. As you all know, uh, your Facebook ad account can get blocked like that. So I have gotten into the habit of just making everything absolutely transparent, like the shop now button. You can use learn more as a reverse psychology for getting people onto your site, but I go with the shop now because I just don't want any hiccups. I want people to know exactly where they're going, exactly what they're gonna get, because I don't want Facebook ads to turn around and go, sorry, dude. Whack, get out. When you're building a logo, you want it to just have two primary colors. This is gonna keep it easy on the eyes and it's gonna be you know, not too stimulating. You also wanna have the same typography, as I've discussed, and it should be in line with your brand image. Take the Debutify logo, for example. It's a butterfly, because what Debutify does is help people with the debut of their business. Also offering tutorials, conversion hacks, you know the drill. So let's jump into Canva and let's build out a really quick, simple logo. Let's just keep it 100 by 100 because it's gonna be going into your Facebook page, it's gonna be going into your Instagram page, and it doesn't really need to be that big. So start with on Earth, I really like their colors. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of a copycat thing here, and I'm gonna screenshot the background of their page. And then I bring it into imageresizer.com forward slash color picker. And I just pop it in here, and I can get the hex key for it. And then back in Canva, I can make this the background. Really subtly different, but I just prefer it over white. And then I just wanna find a really simple clip art that's free. So I'd go through and I'd find something simple and unique. And of course, royalty free. Okay, so this is pretty cool. And this is essentially what I'm gonna go with. So just pop this into Canva, resize it. Now I just flip it over. And then what I do is I go back to my, my store and I just make sure that I've got the typography the same. So I head into theme settings and I go typography. And I just double check what I've got here. So it's El Grea Sands. Okay, it's kind of taking shape. Let's go with the regular. And then you can go to text effects and make it stand out a bit. You can even do something like this. I kind of like that. I mean, I essentially wanted to start from scratch to show you guys how I did it. And that's kind of basically what I ended up with. I just cut this in half, because I knew that I was gonna have this here on the left, and it's the same with Facebook and with Shopify. And that just curves nicely into the rest of the shop. 
Okay, so step two for building a great Instagram page to promote your business is having a decent highlights section. Later on in this video, we're gonna be explaining exactly how to drive traffic to this Instagram page. But right now, you wanna have something solid, enticing, exciting, and engaging that's actually gonna provide people with value when they land on this page. So I just started this a couple of days ago to showcase the page. I went on Canva and I made inspiration, behind the scenes and ferns. But you could have heaps of things here. You could have an unboxing, you could have testimonials and reviews, and you could have sales. You can do whatever you want. Just make sure that it's in line with your brand. Now, I've just encountered a mistake that I've made that I wanna share with you guys, which is I made the text way too small. So I built this on Canva and I kinda of thought it'd be all good, but what I would really recommend is making the text massive or not having any text at all. Because you can use the Instagram text, which is gonna be bigger anyway, I would probably recommend just having a little logo or a symbol that's sort of in match with what you're saying. Like sale, like a dollar sign with a slash through, you know, intuitive things like that. So a good example of this is Earth. Right along here, they've got a bunch of stories and it keeps going. And they've got all of these beautiful highlights. Now they've kind of got, um, they're off to a winning start here because they're a photo company, so they've got great pictures. But they're just a small Shopify store, just like you and me, and they do it really well. Building out these highlights is not gonna happen overnight. And the same with all of the techniques I'm gonna discuss in this video. But what I wanna encourage is starting these habits now so that in six months, if you incorporate all of these habits every week, you're probably, hopefully, definitely gonna have a respectable established brand. You're goddamn right. And you'll absolutely certainly have this in 12 months time if you do this every week. So I'm pretty keen to see you guys in a year and Fern City just be sold to Forbes for like 100 million. I mean, maybe it could happen. It could happen. Maybe someday. Okay, step three, you wanna add content to your page. Now, I only started this a couple of days ago, but I've used an app called Later to schedule posts every day. They're all very simple photos, and of course, I would use the space to promote the product. But right now, what I wanna do is build a nice little top layer so that when people land on the page, they see my most recent photos are really nice. I shot all of these photos on 35 millimeter film and I think they're all very pretty. They're also all in line with the eco-friendly niche that's reflected in the comments as well. Now I haven't done this yet, but my product, the bees wrap, is absolutely in line with the old bad way, new good way technique. So I'd really recommend that you do that too. Simple way to do this is just go, here's the old way of doing things. In my niche, it's Glad wrap, cling film, saran wrap, which is just that plastic stuff that you wrap your leftovers in. The new way is my product. It's the bees wrap, an eco-friendly, ethical, durable, reusable alternative to this old way. You can cut it down the middle, you can make a video. There's a hundred different ways you can do this. Of course, I'm gonna leave that to you. This technique is so old. I think I remember Don Draper saying something like, The most important idea in advertising is new, creates an itch. You simply put your product in there as a kind of calamine lotion. But he also talked about a deeper bond with the product. Calamine lotion is obviously some sort of moisturizer. I mean, I can't remember. I, I wasn't born in the 30s. Step four, comment on other pages that are at a similar scale to your own. You can also tag people who are in this same sort of bracket. You wanna just go in, post a nice photo, and put something like, hey, check out what I'm doing with this product. Get people to come in, ask them questions that are gonna engage them. Tell jokes that are gonna make them laugh. Something that actually provides a bit of value that's gonna make them come back to your store. So when you tag somebody in a post, put up your photo image or your video, tag them in the post, and then put some hashtags as well in the caption. So the old way of doing hashtags was just to write your post and then have a little like bundle of hashtags at the bottom. But Instagram's sort of demoting that activity because it looks real spammy and it's obviously just trying to garner more followers. So what people are starting to do now is incorporate those hashtags within the caption, within the paragraph itself. You can say something like, hey, have you tried this new hashtag fresh look? You know, it's pretty intuitive. Make a Word document and try and organize a few different of these paragraphs. When you're starting out, it doesn't really matter if you sort of repeat yourself, you know, you should be posting like two to five times every single day. And people aren't gonna be seeing all of these posts. They're probably only gonna see one or two. So I'd use an app like Later for this, write out a solid piece of copy and promote it over and over again. But you know, obviously you should test your own things and do what is in line with yourself and what is in line with your brand vision. 
And of course, these hashtags, needless to say, have to be in line with the niche. Hashtag. You want to target smaller hashtags because that's going to get you in line with those other pages that are closer to your sort of size bracket. And of course, throw in a couple of massive 5 million follower hashtags. But to be honest, I'm not really following throw on hashtags. I don't really know many people that do. Um, so I wouldn't say that hashtags are that important. So don't stress over the hashtags. Don't push me. Key things to remember here is just be consistent, post a lot, comment a lot, get in touch and engage with lots of people on Instagram. And step five, comment technique. You wanna tag people. Now, I just started this a couple of days ago, but I did this yesterday and I was really surprised at how much feedback I got. I followed just under 50 people and I got 10 followers back, which is really decent. I just went through a couple of pages, like not even that many, and I just commented, replied, and put my own content up there. Just replying to questions that people put on posts, starting my own questions, and driving people towards my page. Just when I logged in to make this video, I saw a few of these replies. You can see here that I'm targeting people that are in my niche and they're at my scale. Fern City, oh, that's such a great idea. Thanks. Thanks. Fern City, yes, so much better in so many ways. I'm just talking to people who are in the same niche as me. They're selling eco-friendly products. So it's very easy for me to come in and just say, this is excellent. Have you seen this product? Stuff like that. And I was very happy with those 10 follows. So if you scale this up and you do this for 30 minutes a day, imagine how many people are gonna follow you in a couple of months time. Another important thing to note is that these people who follow you back are actually in the niche and their followers are too. So you're not just getting random, unengaged, uninterested followers. You're getting people who've already expressed an interest in products that are similar to your product. So this is just a win-win scenario. You play to win the game. So I just wrote a really short um, description here to just to, just a showcase for this video. I post it to um, Fern City on Facebook and I would tag the people that have recently followed me. You know, it's pretty easy right there. I mean, throw away Nat Geo there. And then I'd add a location and I would usually post it to Facebook, but it's not really working right now. It might be because I'm doing a screen recording. And I just share that, boom. And now you've got another piece of nice content that when people land on your page, they can see it. So here's somebody I followed yesterday. They're obviously interested in the outdoors and animals. So they just posted a photo of a sheep. And look, they're doing exactly what I was saying. Who's ready for a flick transition? First video is from today. I'd probably just say something like, whoa, does anyone else live on a farm? You know, these are just straight off the top of my head, but it's basically just to showcase this sort of idea. And you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they, they commented back because they want to have people commenting on their posts as well. So it's gonna reflect good on you. Make sure that you post something really enticing, really engaging when you make these kinds of posts. And another thing to do is like, if you follow these kinds of like, these pages that are in your niche, you can send them a message. Zero waste journey. Send them messages and say, hey, I really like what you're doing. Just getting in touch with people that are around you in your sort of scale is gonna be really beneficial for your business. Step six is building stories. This is gonna take an awful lot of time, but it's really gonna pay off in the end. The first thing that having stories on your channel does is it shows that you're active. When I posted all of those comments yesterday on those bigger pages, I had already posted a cool story as well. But it shows that you're active and people don't really wanna follow pages that are inactive, that are old, that might not be posting right now. So you wanna post a story every single day, something that's really cool that's gonna drive value. And of course, you always wanna at your page. There's so much scope here. You can ask questions, ask polls, have reviews, put product testimonials, unboxings. You can put video creatives. You can reuse everything from your Facebook ads to pop it up, but just keep it going. Post a lot and keep it congruent in terms of color with your brand image. Step seven is just a bit of a small one, is follow pages that are at your similar scale. You can do this really easily when you find somebody that's at your level with like 1000 followers, it'll pop down underneath it like similar pages or related pages to follow. And then you can just go through there and find those pages and follow them as well. And then you can just do the same commenting technique and tagging technique with those new pages. And hopefully them and their followers will be driven to your page and they'll like you if you have a good page that is. Now, step eight, bit of a big one here and it's using Instagram influencers. 
We've talked about this in this video here, but of course you can flesh it out once you have your own Instagram page. That video is just talking about purely from a Shopify perspective, but now you're operating as another Instagram page. Essentially though, it is the same thing. You want to be finding macro influencers to start with because, you know, people with like 1,000 to 10,000 followers are a bit closer to how you've begun. And then you want to focus on micro influencers and maybe throw a Hail Mary out to those big 1 million followers. He gets away from the pressure, fires to the end zone. It's but I would obviously recommend that as you're starting out to just focus on smaller people. People who aren't verified, who don't have massive followings are gonna be a little bit easier to negotiate with than those massive big fish with heaps of followers and heaps of experience in influencer marketing. Essentially, you just wanna send them a message and say, hey, would you be interested in promoting my product? Now, you can say that however you like. In the past, I always throw out a howdy as the beginning. I don't say hey, I say howdy because it's a pan interrupt and a very subtle one at that. I say, howdy, big smile attached here. I love your work. Hey, would you be interested in promoting my product? I'll send you a free version or I can pay you 30 to $50. Now it's up to you how much you wanna pay, but that's the kind of price range I would recommend for a beginner, for somebody who's wanting to get an influencer on their side. There's negotiation to get into. I would always recommend not opening the kimono so you don't have to say like, I'm gonna pay you 30 to 50, but it is also nice to just say like, here's what I'm thinking. And they can come back and say like, oh, maybe I was thinking 60 and you can go, oh, it's okay. I have a few other influences that I'm in touch with. Negotiating is such a massive area and I'll probably make a few more videos on that in the future. So, Clout HQ is basically gonna show me just how much people are getting in terms of engagement rate with Instagram. So of course, when you're starting out, you're probably gonna want a little less followers. So let's go 50K. And we'll put the engagement rate under 10%. And essentially what we wanna do is we wanna find something with three and over engagement rate. And then we can contact them and say, hey, would you be interested in promoting our product? So Eliza Batten, she's got 36,000 followers and she's got a 6.6% .6 engagement rate. So I'd probably just take that name and I'd go on Instagram and I'd message her. Just randomly, it looks like she's already doing shout outs as well. She's wearing Jack Willis clothing. She's promoting Galaxy chocolates. So this is already, oh and look, she's got a yoga mat. She's actually got products all over the show. So pretty funny, she was the first person I found. So I'd probably just follow her, send her a message and say, would you be interested in promoting this really ethical product that I've got? And we'd see if she did. It's really actually that easy. But you know, not all of these people are gonna reply to you. So I'd send out a few more messages, maybe like five to 10 every day until you get a nice Instagrammer that's gonna work with you again and again. And Cloud HQ is gonna show you a few more stats like the average views, how many people are commenting all the time, how often these people posts, and if they're tagging ads or other people as well. And as you can see, she's got a highlighted story and she's got an enormous um, highlights reel, which is, you know, it's helpful, it's intuitive, and it shows me that she's really active on the platform. Step nine is the Instagram television technique. This is for things that are a little bit longer than the one minute posts of videos that you can put on your page or the smaller videos that you can put on your stories. You could post something like above one minute, up to 15 minutes or even an hour, which is a little bit more in depth into your brand. So much scope here. Personally, I'm always gonna recommend making your own creatives. So you could do things like behind the scenes, a day in the life of Fern City, where you go through your little processes, and all of the things that make your brand unique and showcase a bit of your own personality as well. Or you can just do unboxings, reviews, testimonials, or you can go down the copy and paste route. This is quite easy. You can go onto these other bigger pages, find something that's really cool, something that's growing right now, and you can just download it. Have a look at those pages where in the last one day, they've had a lot of increase in views. And then you can just download it and put it onto your own page, but you essentially wanna always credit people. And you can do this on YouTube as well, and always be sure to show people where the source came from. It's actually gonna get you in touch with those other companies, and it's gonna say, hey, I like what you're doing, I like your products, I like your style. Here's a little bit of 
organic marketing. I'm going to tag you in my post and I'm going to share it with my followers. And maybe it'll rub both ways. Of course, you want to use the hashtags and comments and tag people. And you want to make sure that this is in a series. Instagram is basically trying to keep people on the platform as long as possible. So they're going to promote your posts if you have things in a series. Works the same way with carousels. If you've ever noticed when you're scrolling down on Instagram and you flick right on a few people's photos, you're going to see that person again a little bit down the feed. That's because you've spent a lot longer, even if it's only 10 seconds longer, looking at those photos than you would with a single photo. And Instagram's going to say, hey, we saw that you spent a little bit more time here, so we'll promote that again. So you want to do that with series and, of course, with your own posts. And a piece of general advice here is always keep it concise keep it engaging by asking a question and provide value for people because that's going to make them want to come back. It's going to make them stay. When you do this Instagram TV technique, find things that are really funny. They just want a bit of laughter in their lives. Who doesn't want a bit of laughter? <laughs> find those before and after videos, of course, those classic marketing technique videos for the product, but also sort of random videos that are just going to make people happy. And you can say, hey, we found this pretty funny, didn't you? And that's going to make people follow your page. And in future videos, I'm going to talk about how to get verified on Instagram. But right now, I just want to summarize what you should be doing each and every day. And if you don't have the time, at least 30 minutes to an hour a week to help promote your business through Instagram. So you want to make a logo. You want to build out good highlights. You want to build out good stories. You want to build out great posts. You want to comment on those pages that are a little bit bigger than you, and you want to do the same by tagging people. You want to make effective hashtags and keep refining them as you grow. And you want to post things to Instagram television. And with all of those techniques, you should be very much good to go. And I hope that your page explodes and you do really well. If you enjoy this video, please comment below if you had any questions and you wanted to just say thanks. I'd love that. I very much appreciate that. We've just hit 3.3 thousand subscribers. I forgot to say it in the last video when we hit 3K, but 3.3 is pretty damn good as well. So thanks very much guys for the support there. And um, I'll see you at 100 million. Sound good? Okay, anyway, thanks very much for watching. Take it easy.